this is Sapkarshi and we are at the 12th lecture of machine learning and today we are going to learn a very very important classification technique named as decision tree. So these are some of the headings by which our lecture is organized. We learn basics of decision tree. As you can understand tree will have many branches. We will learn how to split the tree. We will look at some of the popular algorithms. We will look at the advantage and disadvantages and finally we will see that motivation of combining trees. So let's start with an example. Let's say uh, you want to develop a decision tree where you want to categorize whether a potential movie will fall into a mainstream hit, a critic's choice or a box office bust. Okay, And uh, you, you also know that this has a relationship with some of the variables like the budget and number of A-list celebrities that are there. So this, this uh, target attributes, you can understand it is categorical. So this is a classification problem. And uh, for you, there are two independent attributes, budget and number of A-list celebrities. So maybe we will just start by drawing this in a two-dimensional plane. Okay. And uh, the first thing uh, that we want to do in a classifier is we want to draw a line so that one side there is one class, another side there is another class, right? So let's see how we can split uh, this region. So let's say we start by having, a, a, having split one like this. So this is your split one. And then we do a further split like this, okay? So basically these two splits, if you see, has broken uh, the landscape into three regions, region 1, region 2 and region 3. Okay. Are you seeing any particular difference between the methods that we have studied earlier? Yes. So one fundamental difference is that we are now dealing with straight lines. We are not dealing, dealing with curves anymore. So one of the fundamental things about decision tree is it always draws straight lines. And another objective of these regions are that they should be as pure or as homogeneous as possible. Okay, So that is one of the motivations or one of the guiding principles of a decision tree. Now, if this is converted into a decision tree, how this will look like? So maybe we will start. So this is your root node where there are 30 movies, each from or 10 from each of the class. We first look at number of celebrities. If it is low, then we see that there is a critical success, 1 out of 12 cases, mainstream heat, 1 out of 12 places, and box office bust, 10 out of 12 cases. So we feel that this node cannot be further splitted. Majority, 10 out of 12 are already you know, box office bust. So we create a leaf node over here. So any unknown node which, which follows this path will land up in box office bust. Now, for the other class, you will see that it is equally poised. Okay, So there is 9 critical success and 9 mainstream hit. So you cannot do anything. You have to further split. So now you look at the other attribute, which is budget. So you see that if the budget is high, then critical success is 1 by 10 and mainstream hit is 9 by 10. And if the budget is low, then critical success is 8 by 8. Okay, So this is how... You know, you are generating leaf nodes which are more and more pure. Okay. So some of the things that you need to note is that the attributes by which you are splitting is called as the splitting attribute. This is your root node. This is your, this is, this one is your internal node and these three are your terminal nodes. Okay. And I also want you to remember that this is called as a white box model because you can understand the path which is followed to arrive at the decision. Many machine learning models, especially later on deep learning models, you will see are completely black box. So here is another example where uh, this we have uh, discussed probably earlier is the famous data set of golf where four attributes of weather is given which are the independent attributes and then you have a target attribute whether the environment is conducive to play golf or not. So this can generate a decision tree like this. The, the one that are in rectangle and gray shaded are the leaf nodes. Okay. Now, let us uh, go and see another example. So here you will see uh, that there are three independent attributes about loans and you want to find out 
whether the person will default in a loan, loan or not, cheat or not. Okay. Uh, so this is a decision tree that will be generated over here. Okay. So now the question is that how do we generate the split? There may be several attributes by which uh, the split can be achieved. How to pick the best attribute? So for that we use a method called as entropy. Entropy is a very famous measure uh, proposed by Shannon uh, which is used to measure the uncertainty involved in a signal or a random variable. Okay. So, random variable is a variable which can assume different states or different values with different probabilities. Okay. And the more the uh, uh, more the uncertainty, higher is the value of entropy. Okay. So, let us understand this with an example. So, let us take uh, tossing of a coin which is a random variable and the two outputs are you know head and tail. So, can you tell me when it is completely uncertain? Like it cannot, the uncertainty cannot go beyond that. When the coin is completely unbiased. So, probability of head is 0 0.5, probability of tail is 0 0.5. Okay. And can you tell me when it is completely certain? It will be completely certain if I bias and make either the probability of head or tail to be 1 like in the movie. Right. Okay. So, uh, let's look at these different scenarios. So, we will evaluate six scenarios first case you know it is 0 0.5 0 0.5 then we go on biasing the probability of head little bit every time and we finally reach one okay and this is how entropy is calculated so what you do is for each of the states you find the probability and then you find the probability to the base uh, pro log of the probability to the base 2 you multiply that and sum okay so let's do the calculation so, we calculate now uh, log p of 0 0.5 which comes to be minus 1, log p of 0 0.6 which comes to be 0 0.74 and so on and so forth. Alright, so you will notice that all these are coming in negative, right? So, you know the reason. The reason is that, you know, you when you, uh, when you take logarithm of a number which is less than the base, then it will it will naturally go to a negative number right so half is nothing but 2 to the power minus 1 so that minus 1 is coming over here okay so next step is we multiply ph by log ph so we multiply ph into log ph so it is 0 0.5 into 1.0 so this is being calculated right and for each one of these states so each of one of these conditions entropy is being calculated so 1 into 0 0.5 minus 1 into 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.5 okay so you finally take a negative out so it will be 1 okay and as you go along 0 0.74 into 0 0.6 is 0 0.44 minus 1.32 into 0 0.4 is 0 0.53 as you go along you will see the uncertainty is decreasing and naturally when the head has a probability of 1 there is no uncertainty at all okay so let us now look at this in more detail so the probability of head in this case was 0 0.5 to 1 and the corresponding entropies were 1, 1 to 0 okay so this is just a pictorial representation as uh, the coin is becoming more and more biased the uncertainty is going down and finally going to 0 okay now uh, let us see how this concept of entropy can be used to split a decision tree. So a question is that let's say you have a root node where 40 is from class 1 and 40 is from class 2 and for B 40 is from class 1, uh, 40 is for class 2 like same root node then which split is better? Okay, 30, 10, 10, 30 or 20, 40, 20, 0. I hope you can understand the meaning of 30, 10. Here 30, 10 means 30 from class 1 and 10 from class 2 like this. Okay. So, what is information gain? In information gain, what we do is we find entropy of this root node and entropy of combined entropy of this terminal nodes or this splitted nodes. Okay. So, if the entropy goes down, that means your uncertainty is going down. 
uncertainty is going down means that you are getting more pure or more homogeneous groups that means there are more uh, nodes of the same class in a particular node right more observation from the same class okay so let us do the calculation okay i think that will make things more clear so here you see that uh, class 1 has uh, probability of 0 0.75 and 0 0.25 and the right side is 0 0.25 and 0 0.75 left side it is 0 0.33 0 0.67 right side is 1 and 0 okay now one question that can come to your mind is that finally how do we you know so we can calculate entropy of these and we can calculate entropy of this but then how we can get combined entropy so that's a valid question what we'll do is in that case, we will just weight the entropy based on the number of observation that is in there, that node, right? So, in this case, both of these nodes will get same weightage. However, here, this node will get three times more weightage than this node, this node's entropy, right? Okay. So, let us look at the calculation now. So, if we, you know, find out this P1 log P1 and uh, we calculate the entropy. So, for the left node also it comes to 0 0.81, for the right node also it comes to be 0 0.81. So, the final entropy is 0 0.81. Okay. Now, for the other split or split B, you can see that uh, the first node has an entropy of 0 0.91, whereas the second node has an entropy of 0. So, when you multiply 0 0.91 by 0 0.75 and then multiply 0 by 2.25, we get something like 0 0.686 or 0 0.69. Okay. So, can you tell me now which split is better? So, naturally, the split which results into lesser entropy, that gives you more information gain. Right. So, that is removing uncertainty more. So, naturally, information gain actually uh, prefers the second split or split B. Okay. Now, let us look at uh, another way of splitting. So, another way of splitting is called as Gini index. Okay. So, Gini index what it does is that it instead of uh, multiplying by log of probability, it just multi or squares the probability and then you know it subtracts it from 1. Okay. And the weighting mechanism that I uh, uh, explained in the last class, same weighing me mechanism will be used here. Okay, so if you do the calculation now, you do the squares and then you do a weighted sum. So Gini index for the first case comes to be 0 0.375 and Gini index for the second case comes to be 0 0.33165. Now the obvious question that might cross your mind is that when to use information gain and when to use Gini index. Now, to tell you, they are used quite, quite interchangeably. Now, maybe more and more trees use Gini index, but information gain is also a very, very good measure. Okay. So, I looked up some research paper and this is what is their conclusion that it only matters in 2% of the cases whether you use Gini impurity or entropy. However, entropy might be little slower to compute because you are doing a log and then you are doing a multiplication. Okay. So, the reference of this is this particular paper in case you want to read further on. Okay. Now, let us look at the algorithms. So, ID3 is one famous algorithm which was developed by Ross Quinlan in 1986. Okay. So, it starts by finding the best categorical attribute to split and by which it splits, it uses the major information gain. So, it looks at the, it picks the best attribute, then again picks the best attribute and that's how it goes. Where it stops? Until there is no more split possible, right? That all, so it has reached a leaf node which is homogeneous, okay? Or there are no more attributes to be selected. Or uh, is it, it is possible that even if it is non-homogeneous, you know, you cannot really find a suitable value by which the leaf node can be splitted further. It is a greedy algorithm and it does not backtrack. Okay. So, Rose Quinlan himself improved this uh, into C4.5 where you know you could split also by numerical attributes. However, the numerical attributes needed to be converted to discrete attributes. And one very famous 
uh, implementation in Vika tool is called as J48 corresponding to C4.5. So that is an open source implementation. C4.5 has the capability to handle missing data and also it could backtrack. So there was a very famous paper around 10 years back in, in Springer which listed C4.5 as the number one in top 10 algorithms in data mining. So this is a very, very popular algorithm. C5.0 was further improvement where it could produce smaller trees, used memory more efficiently and use boosting. So we'll uh, read about the motivation of smaller tree and boosting little later. CART is another very famous algorithm where it can work with both numerical and categorical attributes and not only that, the target value also can be classification and regression. Okay, so it can be quantitative or qualitative and has capability to handle outliers. And one characteristic is it splits are two way splits, okay, binary splits. Uh, this is not a restriction for C4.5 or C5.0. Okay. So now let us look at pruning of tree. So you understand pruning of tree, right? So you are trimming the tree. You are you are you, you are not taking bushier trees, rather you are selecting trees with less branches. Why so? Because it turns out that bushy trees actually results from overfitting. Okay. So we will look at one example using regression. So essentially, let's say you have two variables x1 and x2 and if your decision tree is generating, generated then uh, it will split this uh, feature space into these five rectangular boxes or decision regions. Okay, And essentially what you will do is you will try to find out uh, if it is a regression problem that what is the difference between the actual value and the expected value. Okay, a Actual value and the predicted value. Right? And you find a square like you did for linear regression. And finally, you will sum it up over all the regions. So there will be double summation, one for all the observations within a region, and then the second summation over all the region. So this is the formula. Okay, And here, T actually indicates the number of regions or number of leaf nodes. Because if you understand, number of leaf nodes is analogous with the number of regions that will be generated. Okay, Now, if you want your tree to be simple, you want it to have less leaf nodes. Okay, so that can be one of the techniques. So instead of trying to minimize this, you can add another factor, which is a function of t. So in this case, uh, we take another parameter alpha and take the uh, number of leaf nodes. Okay, so basically, uh, what it tells is that if there is a tree uh, which has a, a certain squared error uh, and maybe four leaf nodes and if you have another tree with five leaf nodes and same squared error you will prefer the one with four leaf nodes okay so that allows you know the tree to be linear all right and uh, this factor I, this factor is called as a loss function and this is called as a penalty function or the regularization function which you see in lot many uh, machine learning algorithms so, if you have an unpruned decision tree like this, a corresponding pruned decision tree will be much cleaner and will have uh, a representation like this. So, let us look at some other rules which can also be used to prune that tree. So, one such uh, restriction can be that you do not allow uh, leaf nodes to be created if there are at least not 10 samples, 10 observation going into that uh, that leaf node. So if you keep a minimum sample leaf equal to 1.0, you will see that your predictions are more staircased, okay, than, than like this, right? So you can also understand that when you get such zagged curve, probably what is happening is it is following, you know, following your actual value very closely, okay? So this is another example where the depth of the tree is varied, okay, and uh, you, you see that uh, when the depth is more, so it, it follows the data again more closely, right? So more the depth, more the chance it is to overfit, all right? Now let us look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of decision tree. So you can understand probably this is the easiest model to explain. And that's why it is 
very very acceptable also to the business people okay it can be displayed graphically and can be understood by a non expert and it can handle qualitative attributes missing value noisy attributes so these are some of the very very good advantages of decision tree however some uh, disadvantages are that uh, single decision tree may not enjoy same level of accuracy as some other models right some advanced or sophisticated models and trees can be very non robust so basically it can depend a lot on the training set data okay so this is also one of the problems all right so also one thing that is to be noted is that a decision tree always uh, you know creates a linear or a straight line uh, bifurcation okay so this is a very interesting example so let's say originally you had done uh, you had this kind of data okay and the decision tree can work and fit a straight line okay now let's say you have just rotated the plane by 45 degree okay so uh, now what you see is that your decision tree classifier no longer works so easily it 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 becomes quite complicated right so it changes the data doesn't change you have just rotated it right so basically you try to develop algorithms which are rotation independent which are scale independent okay all right now that gives us a motivation that if it is non robust Uh, it only draws straight line boundaries uh, can be combined trees okay so this is a small result from one of our conference papers so what we tried to do was uh, we have ran decision tree on multiple uh, data sets okay so uh, this one so we have used in this particular graph nine decision trees and uh, this blue line is uh, where where we have got minimum accuracy and this Uh, red or amber line is where we have got maximum accuracy among those nine decision trees and this gray line is what we have got uh, using a majority voting of, of the nine decision trees so you can see that most of so it has improved the mean like a lot okay and many cases it is it is also performed better than the maximum uh, decision tree okay the decision tree that is giving you maximum accuracy now two fundamental techniques to uh, actually combine uh, decision tree is called as bagging and boosting okay uh, so in bagging what happens is that the training set from there you create different samples okay which which you called as bagged sample actually this bagging name comes from bootstrap aggregator b from bootstrap and from aggregator agg okay so basically what you create is you create different samples bootstrap sample means random samples with replacement okay so there can be repetition and there are some other mathematical properties which i am not going into and you then what you do is with is each different bootstrap samples you build different decision trees and then finally you do an average okay so that is how your bagging works however in boosting it works in a different way so basically you know it tries to take input uh, from uh, from the previous decision tree so it it happens in in a way which is sequential so the first split may be like this and then it says that okay uh, this is doing a good job in 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 categorizing this region let us try to now categorize this region which it cannot do so it categorizes this region once this region is categorized it says okay but these classes are not categorized properly then it draws another line so finally what happens is that you get a decision boundary like this okay so this is how boosting works and we should mention that there there are famous algorithms like adaboost xgboost which are very very popular with the machine learning community and which will also cover in our future machine learning lectures okay Uh, so if you compare them so bagging can happen parallelly whereas boosting happens sequentially this is also to be mentioned that there is another way of combining uh, trees which is called random forest uh, so this is also something we'll discuss in later class so thank you very much for watching this uh, video and uh, whatever questions you have 
please put in your comments and I'll be very, very happy to answer them.